Welcome to Sinister Heroes. I'm your host, Danny Iniquitous. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, this is a channel about Dungeons and Dragons where we try to take a darker tone with everything we do here. So if you like edgier kind of content, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. Check us out on Patreon. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, the link is in the description. And a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters. We love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to us. Uh, a big thank you to our good friends at Dice Legions. Use the promo code SINISTER and get 10% off all of your purchases. Uh, they have a lot of great IRL games, uh, accessories, t uh, dice, dice bags, everything you need. Definitely check that out. Uh, we are doing a big push to hit 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We cannot do that without you. Thank you so much. If you're a returning viewer and you like what you see, definitely hit that subscribe button. Um, with that all said and done, we're going to jump into this week's video. We're talking about the Celestial Warlock. The Celestial Pact Warlock has the divine fortune of making a pact with the deity from the Celestial Plane, well, from Mount Celestia or the Upper Plains. These are your normal, holy, good people. Uh, not my cup of tea, but there's a lot of great uh, role-playing opportunity within the Warlock to make this pact. Maybe you're an, uh, an acolyte and, and you weren't chosen by the church and yet you, you pleaded and begged to be able to 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 worship and to to lead the people and to show the true way uh, of this deity, or maybe you saw that the church was teaching this thing incorrectly and wrong, and you were trying to correct their path, and they shunned you for it. But then the deity saw that you were correct and bestowed this power onto you, and now you've made these people your enemy. This 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 temple is now your arch enemy and you're sent to destroy them it you can create a lot of great religious zealotry with it in in a very cool warlocky kind of way uh this is one of the only few warlock subclass that really puts you in that kind of position uh it is something obviously you need to do a lot of work on really figure out who you make your pact with understand that your packs work differently than your packs with another entity because it's Mount Celestia, there's probably a very good chance that they're going to honor your pact as opposed to try and make a, uh, a, a deal that backfires on you. Uh, so be prepared to ask for everything uh, and don't be ashamed about it. Bonus cantrips. At first level, you learn the Light and Sacred Flame cantrips. They count as Warlock cantrips for you, but they don't count against your number of cantrips known. This is important because you learn only really two cantrips, I want to say, as a Warlock, so your spell selection is very, very limited. It is so easy to be a Warlock and pick up Eldritch Blast and not look any other direction. Understand that Sacred Flame does have its benefits. And in some circumstances, that radiant damage is something you're going to need. Uh, specifically, if you're fighting undead and you need to keep them down, Sacred Flame can do that, where Eldritch Blast cannot. Um, so really take that into consideration. And there's some other abilities you get later on that might also reflect that. Healing Light. At first level, you gain the ability to channel Celestial Energy to heal wounds. You have a pool of D6s that you spend to fuel this healing the number of dice in the pool equals 1 plus your Warlock level. As a bonus action, you can heal one creature you see within 60 feet of you, spending dice from the pool. The maximum number of dice you can spend at once equals your Charisma modifier. Minimum of one dice. Roll the dice you spend, add them together, and restore a number of hit points equal to the total. Your pool regains all expended use when you finish a long rest. Now... This is why you don't really pick up healing spells as a Celestial Warlock, because it doesn't benefit you. Your spell slots are so limited, uh, you're better off picking the spells of utility or damage or doing a specific thing that should be reflective of your Celestial Warlock. That being said, you do get Cure Wounds onto your spell list, uh, which is a big healing spell, and you get it at first level. Again, I wouldn't use it. Let Healing Light be your healing uh, and use that as a bonus action, uh, which is probably a good reason to keep your bonus action free. So really figure out if you're going to be a Hex Celestial Warlock or not, because if you're going to avoid that, uh, then maybe you might be in a situation where you're more free to use Healing Light than you are to just mix and max and pull Hex across the board. Uh, but take that into consideration when you're choosing your spells. 
Radiant Soul. Starting at 6th level, your link to the Celestial allows you to serve as a conduit for Radiant Energy. You have resistance to Radiant Damage, and when you cast a spell that deals Radiant or Fire Damage, you add your Charisma modifier to one Radiant or Fire Damage roll of that spell against one of its targets. Now, you do get a couple of spells that do that normally, because you have Guiding Bolt, you'll have Flaming Spear, just based on your domain spells, also Flame Strike. Um, definitely go through your Warlock spell list. There's a lot of fire damage spells there already. Uh, and this is really upcasting that in a lot of situations. This works for your cantrips, so this makes Sacred uh, Flame a little bit better for you. So if you wanted to deviate from being a Hex Warlock and using Eldritch Blast all the time, this is a good way to do that. Uh... You can use those invocations that would, you would have used on Ag, on uh, Elder's Blast and put them in some other places. Ultimately, your damage will probably still be higher with Elder's Blast because it is just the best um, regular attack in the game. Uh, and you can really kind of figure out a new way to play a Warlock. Uh, I like Sacred Flame. Uh, at 6th level, I could see me dipping out of using Elder's Blast uh, simply because I would want a newer flavor. Uh, Sacred Flame will always have its use, again, because it is radiant damage, and sometimes you need that. The resistance to radiant damage is great, but 9 times out of 10, you won't be dealing with that, ever. Celestial Resistance. Starting at 10th level, you gain temporary hit points whenever you finish a short or long rest. These temporary hit points equal your Warlock level plus your Charisma modifier. Additionally, choose up to 5 creatures that you can see at the end of the rest. Those creatures each gain temporary hit points equal to half your Warlock level plus your Charisma modifier. This is fantastic. Uh, this I've seen used by the true love of my life, Meredith, uh, from a campaign uh, at this point. It's been a long time ago. Uh, I still love you, Meredith. Uh, that being said, Celestial Resistance is uh, a great great buff uh you get it at 10th level so that's a big pile of temporary hp you give it out to a large number of people and temporary hp is fantastic uh if it doesn't seem like it's a high enough mount to absorb a hit understand it it's just flat out damage reduction from a hit uh you know taking 15 points of damage off of being hit at like 20th level doesn't it isn't a huge amount but it helps to mitigate those damages and then it comes in with resistance that stuff makes a difference man this stuff can save your life temporary hit points uh it's it's a great buffer it's like a little bit of an overshield it's awesome this is passive this is always on you will always gain use out of this uh there's never a reason not to use this uh this will be so constantly used uh and one of the better abilities and it's a, a great way to help up the confidence and ability in your group because say you take a short rest and you've done a lot of short rests before and you're still pretty hurt this will help you feel a little bit better about pursuing or finishing whatever it is you're trying to do uh, and the only way you'll get this is if your warlock is incredibly awesome searing vengeance starting at 14th level the radiant energy you channel allows you to resist death when you have to make a death saving throw at the start of your turn you can instead spring back to your feet with a burst of radiant energy. You regain hit points equal to half your hit point maximum, and then you stand up if you so choose. Each creature of your choice that is within 30 feet of you takes radiant damage equal to 2d8 plus your charisma modifier, and is blinded until the end of the current turn. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. So... First and foremost, it's weird that the text says that you spring back to your feet and then you can choose whether you stand or not. It's just weird. I'd imagine you would just stand. Important thing to note. Uh, unless the enemies that you were fighting that knocked you unconscious are um, have blindsight, the charisma modifier, of the radiant damage that is dealt to it uh, and blinds them, would give you the availability to walk away from them without being hit by opportunity attacks. Without having to take the disengage action. Because you need to see the uh, opponent leave the area in order to gauge an opportunity attack. Without Tremor Sense, without Blind Sense, uh, you will not be able to tell that that happens. There is no save. They are blinded. Period. Full stop. 
and they take that damage also. Um, the damage probably won't eradicate anything around you, uh, but 2d8 plus, I gotta imagine you have 5 at this point, uh, in a fight that's been dragging out for a little bit, can be enough to knock a lot of things down. Um, but the important thing to note is, you have your full action, you have your bonus action, and you can walk away from anything that's in melee range of you. And the reason why that's important is because that's how you escape this. They cannot see you, they cannot give you an opportunity attack when you walk away. You can use your spell to do something else, whatever it is. You can drop some of your healing on you. Um, you have a lot of options. This is a very strong ability. First and foremost, anything that can bring you back from, from being in the situation where you're making death saves off of just a will without using any kind of other resources is a very strong thing that's very helpful. You can blind everyone, move away, and if you did make an attack roll, you have advantage on it. So if you did end up fighting a big bad that knocked you down and it's almost, it's like on its last legs, you can walk away and then hit something or you can just stand there and hit it with whatever spell you have. Uh, you know, or Scorching Ray, whatever it is. And that can be enough sometimes. And it's very heroic feeling. And it feels cool just to have this explosion of radiant energy. Boom. Touch. Death. Victory. Like, it's it's it feels good. Our final thoughts. I love the Warlock. I don't think any Warlock subclass is bad in any way, shape, or form. This is a very, very strong one because it does give you the availability to heal. This is probably one of the better versions of healing. There's a druid that does something very similar to this. Um, the name escapes me of that druid. But being able to have a separate pool of dice that you can just throw out there as a bonus action to heal up is such a beneficial way to keep your party going. Because of the way everything works in D&D &D 5e, having one HP, you still do the same damage output as having full HP. Uh... So if you're not playing with extenuating rules or specific rules regarding um, being knocked unconscious and death saves and stuff like that, it's just, it's so powerful just to be able to keep bringing them back up from, from being unconscious. The other abilities you get help build a different warlock. I mean, Radiant Soul really kind of encourages you to not take Eldritch Blast and to use Sacred Flame. Again, I happen to like Sacred Flame. I just, I, it's just one of those spells I really like. But you do have that option. You can you now have a reason to use those other spells because you can add your charisma modifier to it. Yeah, it will never do as much damage as Eldritch Blast does, but you can miss on two out of those three, and you probably will do less damage than Sacred Flame. However you 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 gauge damage per round or whatever mathematics you use for it, do the choice that's going to make you the happiest. I like the idea of being able to be a warlock and not relying on Eldritch Blast. Uh... I build a lot of warlocks that don't, uh, which is probably detrimental and why I make a lot of mid maxes mad at me. Uh, but you do have options to be a different warlock. And when a subclass prevent, uh, presents you with a lot of abilities to not be just the base warlock and to be something really different, that subclass really achieves a goal of being unique. Uh, that's why the Hexblade is so so dynamic in consideration to other Warlock subclasses because you don't really you're not really made to use Eldritch Blast. You're really made to go up there and be in melee. Uh, the Fiend is meant to kind of be like a pseudo half tank because of its availability to keep gaining temporary HP as the fight goes on. The 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 Archfey is meant to be this kind of social, uh, very role playing oriented Warlock. Uh, and, and very deceptive and very debilitating and, and all about, you know, misdirection and illusions. When you do that and they play so differently than each other, it really exemplifies how good a subclass is. And there is nobody that should be playing a Celestial Warlock like every other Warlock because you really miss the mark on what you can do. Uh, you get a lot of abilities to be... Uh, to heal, even though I hate doing that, you get a lot of abilities to be different, to be unique, to be, like, maybe you're willing to run in at 14th level and be dropped on purpose for the sake of blinding someone. You know, you could set it up where you do that, and as soon as that happens, your party takes their reactions, and then they do whatever attacks they have with advantage because they waited. Those kinds of things can be done 
only when you really take the chance to be the subclass and not the base class. And some character classes aren't really built that way. But um, this really has that chance, and that's what makes this subclass amazing. Uh, that being said, we're going to bring this video to a close. If you've made it this far, definitely hit that like. Uh, if you enjoyed the content, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before and you've made it this far, again, we're pushing for 2,000 subscribers. We cannot do it without you. Definitely give us a chance and hit that button. Uh, if you've played Celestial Warlocks or you yourself are someone I'm madly in love with, definitely comment about how great you are and your experience playing your Warlock subclass. Uh, hashtag I love you, Meredith. Definitely, definitely enjoy uh, playing this subclass. Check us out on Patreon if you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter. Uh, big thank you to our Patreon supporters. We love you guys. Thank you for all the support. A big thank you to our uh, good friends at Dice Legion. Use the promo code Sinister, get 10% off. And thank you for giving a spooky kid a chance. Mm -hmm.